Cleopatra, African Queen. <laughs> African Queen, sorry, I literally have to stop after the first line. I don't think Cleopatra ever imagined her ruling over the Roman province that included Carthage. Mother to a nation of millions. Sorry, I had to stop it again. No. Ptolemaic Egypt was not a nation in any sense of the word. Nationalism comes from the idea, from the constructed idea of a people sharing a common ethnicity, heritage or homeland or language or culture with the authority coming from the people. A Macedonian dynasty and a Greek upper class ruling over the people of the Nile uh, with authority from a military uh, sense of might and multiple gods is the antithesis of a nation and the idea of her being a mother to this nation is just another Americanism leaking in. The Romans had uh, the idea of um, founding father titles, um, patres patriae, father of the fatherland, but during this era, so during the era of the Republic, it was only given in exceptional circumstances to Camillus, for example, who rebuilt the city after the sacking by the Gauls. I don't know enough about Ptolemaic Egypt to say they had a similar idea, but Cleopatra, who oversaw the fall and conquest of her kingdom, I don't believe deserves this moniker. Why is her hair curly and worn up? Usually hair was normally worn down by Hellenistic women and the curls and braids we often associate with Cleopatra were typically wigs. Um, that was an Egyptian tradition of which uh, Cleopatra embraced. So this is not accurate at all. Ptolemy, her husband and her brother is now deceased. Not a sibling that Cleopatra has to worry about any longer. She's now in a very strong position. Except... Cleopatra has a problem. Cleopatra's problem is her sister. I just know it. Um, I think this whole uh, series overplays the threat of Arsinoe. She's a um, prisoner in a far off Roman province at this point. She has no army nor a Roman general who can provide her one. I do understand that uh, family rivalry makes this story more compelling and having two black women fighting for power does further propagate the main theme of this series. However, this documentary with its casting of Cleopatra as a native black queen a native black African queen I'm trying to fight white Roman conquest fails to see that after the death of Ptolemy the 13th and with Cleopatra carousing with the Romans Arsinoe becomes the I suppose native legitimate ruler and figurehead for the Egyptians against the Roman tyranny it would have been a lot more compelling to tell the story about Arsinoe's fight against the treacherous Cleopatra and the Roman colonizers Um, okay, what is this shot of Rome? Rome at this time didn't really have a wall because it simply didn't need one. The gates to Rome were the Alps. The old Servian wall still existed, I suppose, but the city had long since outgrown it, so the gates would just be permanently open. This gate doesn't even particularly look Roman. There's no columns, the, um, triangle structure looks wrong, and the doorway seems to be bricked in as well. I assume this came down to budget constraints though. After Julie the armor looks pretty good. Um, we, we see the chainmail, the um, red tunics, the Lurica segmentata. A lot of people will say that um, a Lurica segmentata, so the um, plated armor wasn't around until the Teutonberg forest, but that's only about 60 years away, so I think this is pretty plausible. <laughs> And the people of Rome are appalled. Um, I'm just not a fan of how grimy and um, colourless the, uh, they make the Roman plebeians. Brightly coloured clothing and clean clothing was common, even expected, even among the poor. Uh, this isn't Monty Python. They can't use humour as an excuse. It's a documentary. She's truly really a child. 
Why are you humiliating her this way? Also, why is this interior of, I, I assume, uh, the Roman Senate or something, wherever Julius Caesar is um, sitting in, why are the walls and the columns unpainted? They would have been very colourful and not at all just white. Also, Caesar needs a bald patch. Why does he have a full head of hair? Once again, Rome needs to be a lot more colourful than this. I mean, there's a few red strips on the building, so that's something at least. <laughs> <laughs> the armour of the Ptolemaic um, royal ensemble, or whatever. Why are they wearing fish scales? She has with her her second brother husband, Ptolemy the Fourteenth. maybe feeling like he was a third wheel. <laughs> there it is again, the fish scale costume. That must be the worst costume I've ever seen. You made a promise to me. Any promise I make to you does not supersede a promise I make to the Roman people. One of the things that would have attracted Cleopatra to Julius Caesar is he was a very savvy political power player. And this is key and inherent to the DNA of being a Ptolemy. That's a bit of a stretch. Republican governments like Rome's produces very different people to the dynastic monarchies like the Hellenistic world. Um, a Caesar needed decades to claw himself from being on the wrong side of a civil war, um, compete with hundreds of other ambitious politicians and generals who also wanted everlasting glory and adoration of the people. And this is compared to palace politics where you are born into a ruling family. Family. There's a reason why many believe that the Roman Republic uh, produced the most formidable people in all of human history, whereas the Ptolemies were kind of the opposite. In the fluidity of sexuality in ancient Egypt, Julius Caesar is probably not. Oh my god, now we're going to get into feminism and sexual identity in the next part, so um, tune in to watch that.